So um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So um, over the next 12 to 40 minutes, so it's like very condensed, we're going to try to kind of uh, touch the whole topic of AR and retail from multiple angles. Um, so we might just brief a few sections and a few areas, but just we want to kind of uh, show you how ubiquitous the whole topic AR and retail is all about. Um, OK, yeah, it's jumping. So uh, uh, just like a quick introduction slide. So we could have run for, for, for quite a bit. So, so we have seen the market, uh, quite a few things happening. And I checked out like Google Trends. So what were like the key drivers or like uh, the key buzzwords over the last uh, seven, eight years. So the first one was like, hey, we were quite famous in 2008. So we've been like the first AR app on the Google T1. Uh, so this was super exciting, created quite some buzz. Who knows, like this spike in 2012? The big AR spike, anyone? What's that? So this was, this was Google Glass. And, and of course, like uh, last year, we had like the big Pokemon spike. Um, the message I want to get across by that is like uh, we had many years of like hype in AR, and now we finally reached reach a stage where people are adopting that, not only because like Pokemon has such a good technology but uh, because it, it's a use case where people just like to play location-based gaming. And uh, when you look to the next slide, oh, clicker is a bit interesting. Uh, when you look to the next slide, looking at like a few stats from, uh, from, uh, from, from IDC, uh, you see that um, uh, they believe like 2020 will, be, will become the year of augmented reality in retail, so just like another two and a half years to go. Um, it does make sense because like 84% uh, of the people actively use their smartphone in the store. And so that's why it makes total sense to kind of combine uh, AR and VR with, uh, with retail. And um, finally, 90% of all shoppers are open to kind of use their phone for pre-shopping activities. And um, drawing the line to some use cases and kind of giving the analogy to the whole Pokemon example. So that's an example called Canadian Tire. I'm not sure if Steve liked it too much, but like Canada, like very, very huge retailer. Uh, they launched a service called the Canadian Tire Wow service last year. Um, it's tremendously su uh, uh, successful. So like uh, the Canadian Flyer is a brochure that will be sent out to every household in Canada. Um, there are more people reading the Canadian Tire Flyer than the Catholic Bible. And, uh, and they try to kind of... Um, use augmented reality as a pre-shopping tool. So on one hand, kind of um, using that for e-commerce, so like every page is augmented. Uh, the nice thing is they don't talk about it as a kind of augmented reality service. They, they talk about it as the Canadian Tire Wow service, and people love doing that. So they have like uh, their flyer, they have their brochure, and just like get product information, uh, get like uh, additional details, get personalized pricing, and at the end have the chance to, to directly uh, start some e-commerce transaction. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, um, second thing would we see a huge traction in kind of pre-shopping is like the whole kind of home decor, home planning furniture stuff. So leveraging markerless tracking, uh, that's something where we see a huge success right now. Um, one reason why this is successful is also technology is there now. So it's not that you have to place a catalog somewhere and kind of uh, use some kind of market-based tracking. This is now all markerless. So this now gets really uh, to a level where it starts getting exciting, where it starts getting realistic, and where kind of home shopping uh, is not only fun, but does create uh, significant value. Uh, the third level, an example from uh, a UK-based uh, shopping brand being super successful, they kind of use AR for brand engagement. And this is being used by thousands and thousands of people daily. You're simply kind of placing funny characters around your Ribena bottle and share it with your friends. Personally, I, I, I wouldn't do that, but it's like insanely successful. Uh, and the key goal again is kind of um, uh, making people interact with the brand and then bringing them to the store to really casually purchase the product. And success is, uh, is tremendous. Okay, 
Um, and the second big piece uh, from a kind of end customer angle is, of course, uh, uh, retail, uh, augmented reality and retail on site at the POS. So um, a platform I like a lot, just launched recently, is called Peak Perks. Uh, the reason why I like them is simply as uh, they kind of touch this whole topic from all different angles. So around kind of uh, finding the relevant stores up to like indoor navigation, uh, up to the, what I call the tried on experience, um, the place it experience, how to kind of find things around. Um, sorry, this clicker is kind of a mess. Um, and last but not least, the kind of the do it experience, so really kind of making people interact with the product. Uh, another really good example is uh, Walmart's Easter Bunny promotion that just uh, came out like a few weeks ago. Also kind of making, making people interact uh, with flyers, making people interact with uh, components in the store uh, and really using all that, not only for the consumer's benefits, but also for kind of analytics and uh, um, reporting purposes. So the last slide somewhere in there. Okay. Just <laughs> so it's like comedy, right? Oh, <laughs> here he goes. Okay, so so uh, kind of wanna wanna wrap this up from a kind of end customer uh, perspective with uh, with some data from a study group called Interactions. So. Um, just based on like what we saw already, 40% of all the customers that have been part of the study, uh, they would be able, would be willing to pay for, pay more for a product if they uh, could experience it through AR beforehand. Um, and, and again, one of the reasons why the stats are so positive is simply that there are now examples out there where uh, technology matches expectations and where there's actually value being created for the customer. Uh, either like uh, before making the purchase or uh, at the point of sale. And um, now I'd like to hand over to Steven, because now this is all about what are the kind of things from a consumer perspective, but there, there are probably even like a higher value potential for uh, the backend side of things, and that's where Steven is going to take over. Hi, my name is Steven Lewis. I work for a little company called Walmart. Uh, we like to sell things um, so everyone can uh, save money, live better, that kind of thing. Um, so what I'll be talking about today is our journey for our internal development team doing augmented reality. It started uh, about a year ago. Uh, they, uh, there was a, a push to do augmented reality. Pokemon Go was pretty hot, right? Um, so they tapped me to start up, uh, uh, do something augmented reality, something amazing, right? Uh, so I tapped another individual and we paired up and we had to come up with a use case. So the use case we came up with uh, was something that's pretty much in all stores, uh, shelves, we like to call them modulars. Uh, so we did modular setup and with that um, uh, we built our first prototype. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So here we're doing, uh, we got a shelf. We're basically calculating the distance between the shelves and saying, you know what, based on our planogram, that's incorrect. Um, so we fix it, shelf is in position. So keep in mind, a lot of this, what we're doing here, we're doing it for visuals. Um, it actually calculates the distance within a few milliseconds. So that's no fun to show, right? Next, we're gonna show where to place labels. So this was just a fun little demo um, to show like, hey, we got, um, using these, these markers, we can show, um, the demo, you know, where you place marker, uh, where you place labels, where you're going to place products, and make sure that the shelves are compliant. So we had a three process. So here's where we're showing, um, showing this. Keep in mind the technology we're using is very basic. We just took a $200 Android tablet and we went to town. As you can see, um, it's pretty pretty successful. So it, it was um, it was taken very well from our leadership. And so at that point we were um, asked to expand our team. Um, so we eventually got up to about seven people, just pure development. Um, as you can see, we're not really good um, at art, 
Um, so we're just we're basic things, and, and you'll see that in the next demo. Um, but yeah, we handle multifacing, all the good stuff. So uh, we had a lot to learn. Small markers. Uh, we spent a lot of time, a lot of a lot of failures, I would say. Uh, but we did all this in about two months, um, just the two of us. That's fun. And get the point. The next one is we, we, the markers weren't realistic, right? So I can't put markers all over, uh, at least those type of markers you saw, all over the shelves. So we came up with a way to do it without markers. So here's the technology we came up with using the products as markers. And then with that, um, kind of going back to our distance calculations again, we make a plane and we can calculate the distance between each of the products. So we know, hey, this is to the left, this is to the right, that's up, that's down from this particular product. So we make an anchor, we say that's, that's score good, that life is the anchor. And then even here we're gonna show, hey, that's in the wrong spot, you need to move it back. But this is all in real time. So all our use cases we're doing has to be real time because the use case is, I'm gonna have an associate with a headset walking up and down the aisles looking at things and if there's something wrong, they need to be able to correct it right then and there. I don't wanna go around taking pictures, right? I need to be able to figure it out right then. The next one, everyone seems to, to like doing these, um, just picking, right? So I'm, if I'm going around, I got a list of things. I could be a consumer, I could be an associate. I need to go grab things. We have these little arrows basically guiding them where the product is on the shelves in relationship to other things. This was our first attempt at it. It's pretty cool. So with that, um, we got picking. Uh, the opposite use case, stocking. So in this case, I hate doing barcodes, so I'm just gonna say, here's a product I'm looking at, I recognize it, I'm gonna talk to it and say, scan it, scan it, and then it's gonna guide me to where to put it. There's a little ghost image, fun stuff there. And then after that's done, it recognizes it's in the right spot according to the next products by it, and then I'm gonna get another thing. I say, hey, scan it, it figures it out, tells me where it is, got a little HUD going on there, and then it's gonna show me, hey, where to put it. This is pretty cool, it looks so perfect. Yeah, right there, it just looks exactly like it, I love that. So after that, we came up with some more advanced algorithms. We spent months on uh, a library uh, interfacing with different SDKs, and this basically did uh, full audit and guidance. So if you see the arrow, um, it's using basically extended tracking, if you're familiar with that. And we basically say, hey, I've, I got check marks where everything should be, X is where it shouldn't be, Question marks, if it's, I don't know what it is, or it's empty. Hey, immediately detects, that's the wrong spot for it. Figure out where it goes so you can just kind of follow the line. Hey, it goes right there. So you're gonna put that there. And then you're gonna stand back. Should check it up. Good job. So I'm gonna say, hey, that's, that's the wrong spot. No, it wasn't the right spot. And it immediately starts whining at you, right? Saying, hey, put it back. So the, again, this is a really cool um, demo just using, no, you, know, you see no markers. Again, the products are the markers. Using planogram data, you know where everything should be, what's related to it, and, and basically you can make a coordinate plane and figure out where things go. Um, so this is, these are just little proof of concepts. Um, again, it's more of the same stuff. Um, we, um, we're also looking, um, to, again, go beyond just um, basic cameras. So we're looking at HoloLens and other things, um, depth sensors, that'll be pretty cool. But for now, almost everything we're working on, you just need a basic camera and enough processing power to figure things out, plus, plus the data, which in this case was um, eye location data and planogram data. Um, um, if you saw, he, he showed some of our consumer stuff that we made. Um, I can, I will say everything that I've talked about um, is my opinion and not the opinion of my company. I had to throw that in there. <clears throat> Just remember that. Um, but yeah, so we're basically continuing on. We got many use cases uh, for internal development. There's, um, when we first came up, uh, my partner I, Ian, uh, we came up with over 50 use cases just right off the bat that could save our company tens of millions of dollars easy. Because um, with Walmart, everything scales, right? So if I can even shave a second of time off of every associate, and we got over two million associates, there's easy a million dollars a day, right? So everything scales. 
So um, that's what I'd like to show with uh, show you guys. And I don't think we have any time for questions, right? Well, I think um, given the fact that we stopped two minutes early, um, this audience seems like one full of questions. So uh, we'll we'll see. Anyone have any questions? Here we go. All right. For the consumer, ooh. So consumer, I would say from a return on investment um, look, um, driving sales is always a big thing. However, with the with very few people right now from a consumer side using devices, it's very hard to to get a return on value. However, I've got over two million associates waiting for some programs, right? And so you get immediate value, especially when you're having to pay them per the hour. You can do that. We have our own devices that we provide, um, and we're looking at um, hopefully someday in the future doing head-mounted displays, right? Because when you're doing things with products helping customers, you don't want to have things in your hand. You want to be able to help them fully, right? Customer service is our priority. Great. Any other questions? Uh, it's up to you. Uh, so we're, we use various SDKs, um, just just the list of things we've played with would be AR Toolkit, Vuforia, Wikitude. Um, there's even a few others we've, we've been looking at. There's a whole list of them. Uh, but the key that you saw that you needed to, to have it work uh, and to be available is to, to recognize multiple images at once and a pretty good performance. You had a question in the front, right? Well, it's your left, but... I, I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question? Extended tracking, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so that's the ability to detect a marker, and then once the marker goes out of view, you still recognize the place of that marker because you, you recognize the surroundings. In that case, um, I had an anchor, just to explain, I had an anchor, so I chose a product. I knew it was a good location, and basically, based on that, I used that and, and knew that it's way this way, let's just say four feet up and two inches to the right. So as I'm following that anchor, I still know the anchor is way down here as I'm moving the camera. Extended tracking allows you to do that without having to recognize any images in between. Just a, a real quick question for the audience. How many people in here are developers? Okay, so cool. maybe I'm too technical, awesome. I'm sorry. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, if no more questions, right. then uh, thank you very much uh, to the presenters. Thank you.